Well, thank you for the introduction. And this is indeed a joint work with Ivica when I was in NTU. And in this work, we're interested in the uh, design, design strategies that we can achieve based on the AES hardware instructions that are available on most modern processors. So the motivation starts by observing that there are many, many designs uh, recently proposed and accepted to conference, crypto conferences which are based on the IES run function. And many of them provide very good efficiencies on modern processors. And among them, there are two that stand out, which are Aegis and Tiaoxing, which are uh, currently submitted to the CESAR uh, uh, competition, which achieve very, very efficient performances. So why is that? It's because uh, mostly, one, they rely on parallel execution of the AES uh, instructions inside the processor, and two, because they use a very low number of AES run functions uh, inside their, uh, their design. So in this work, we're interested in seeing how far can we go, how far can we decrease the number of AES run functions, for example, in the design, to achieve very, very efficient uh, uh, constructions. So the goal here is, yes, to provide uh, ideas or strategies to design uh, run uh, uh, construction based on the AES run function that are both secure in some sense that, that I'm going to define and which are extremely efficient, meaning something below uh, 0.3 uh, sec up a byte. So jumping ahead, we actually uh, show some design strategies that achieve our goals. And this, for example, could be used in uh, designing some hash functions or max or uh, AE schemes uh, that could achieve very, very high efficiencies on uh, ASN, uh, ASNI enabled platforms. And so for example, we're going to propose some, a bunch of so like seven, eight designs, but there are two that uh, stand out. And if we benchmark them on the latest Intel processor Skylake, uh, the fastest design that you can achieve can reach uh, 0.1 to 5 cycle per byte, and the smallest one in terms of uh, size of the internal state uh, can reach 0.188 cycle per byte. So while here we are focusing on ASNI enabled platform, we still argue that the other platforms, the older ones, they will still provide good efficiencies for those, those construction, mostly because we only rely on two or three rounds of AES. So it's like four times faster than the AES 128-bit uh, cipher, which has 10 rounds, for, for instance. So just a quick recap on ANSNI instruction. It has been proposed by Intel in 2008, and it, proposed, uh, it provides a few instructions to help uh, the, to have the hardware evaluation of the AES circuit. But in this talk, we're only focusing on this uh, uh, instruction, AES ENC, which perform just one round evaluation of the AES front function. So it takes two inputs, X, which uh, where we apply the standard operation of AES, a byte shift to the mix colon, and then a second input, which is a, a potential subkey that we can uh, XOR in the end of the, uh, of the end of this operation. So uh, to, to give some hints about how to design a construction based on AES, we have to define informally two notions, which is first the latency. And the latency is basically the number of clock cycles inside the processor that you have to wait before you can use the output of uh, the, the instruction. So for example, if you look uh, at Haswell, for the, this AES ENC instruction for ASNI, the latency is seven. So it means that you have to wait for seven cycles before you can use the output of this instruction. And then there is the throughput, which is the number of clock cycles that you have to wait before you can call again the same instruction. So basically for here, for Haswell, you have to wait for uh, one cycle before calling the next one, even before uh, getting the output of the just previous instruction that you called. So this can be achieved, for example, to use uh, parallel uh, execution. So the main goal is to uh, provide some building blocks based on this AS ENC instruction and to achieve very high performances and possibly to provide some uh, optimal uh, efficiency for some given platforms. So just a few precisions. We are looking for a single primitive. We are not using, uh, trying to construct a mode uh, using uh, AES, for instance. The construction will uh, consist of an internalized state of several 128-bit uh, words, so for example, 8, 10, 12, it can be possibly large. 
and the step, step update function will uh, take some inputs, for example, input blocks, input uh, message block, for example, if we want to build a Mac, that will be uh, uh, used to update the internal state of the, the construction. So to construct this, we are investigating mainly two uh, different approaches. First, we are trying to decrease as much as possible the number of uh, calls that we make to the AES run function to achieve very high uh, performances. And then we're trying to parallelize as much as possible the calls to the AES instruction. So here is the main uh, structure that we are looking at. So the internal state is here depicted in blue. So we have S state words, which are each 128 bit wide. And this is the state update function for just one step. So the next internal state would be the next blue line here. So in each step, you can choose to evaluate the AES, uh, this, this word by the AES. So it produces this output. It can be that you just use this one and not the evaluation by AES, and you XOR it with the previous value that you have in your internal state. Uh, we uh, implement a right shift like this, and possibly we use the feed forward of the previous value. And the inputs that I mentioned before are linear combination of the message blocks that we are uh, considering. For example, if we want to build a Mac with uh, two, in two message blocks, M1 and M2, the inputs that you can XOR uh, at this stage have to be a linear combination of those. We cannot apply, for example, the ES run function on this. It has to be linear. Uh, the injection has to be linear. So why do we construct the, the structure like this? It's because there are two main design uh, that I mentioned before, for example, AGS 128L, which use very exact same strategy. It has eight words in the internal state, and for each of them, you apply the AES run function, and you XOR it. Uh, to the next uh, message word in, in the state. And then you can see here M1 and M2 are injected at two different places into the internal state. The next example is uh, Xiaoxing, also a, 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 a submission to the Caesar competition. And here the state uh, uses 13 message words, which are grouped in, uh, into three groups. And for each of them, you inject one message. Here it's M1, M2, and then M1 plus M2. And in each of these groups, we are using two AES run function calls to uh, update the internal state. So what's important here is to define the notion which we call the rates, which is the number of AES calls uh, used in the design to process just one um, message block. So for example, if, we, if I look at AES 128, the internal state word is just one. There is just 128-bit uh, word. Number of inputs, the plain text is just one. And we have rate 10 because we use 10 rounds of AES. For AES 256, it's the same. It's 14 because there are 14 rounds. And in the case of AGIS, there are two inputs and eight calls to AES. So eight divided by two give rate four. And similarly for Xiaoxing, we have six calls to the AES uh, run function with two inputs, so the rate is three, which is smaller. And that's probably why we use, uh, we reach uh, better performances for Xiaoxing. So in our case, we want to achieve rates, of course, as low as possible to have very good uh, performances. So the second approach would be the parallelization of as much as possible of the AES uh, instructions. For example, here, if we look at AES-CBC, naturally, it's, it's sequential uh, to, to get the evaluation of CBC. And for example, if I have just one message block, we need to wait for 70 cycles before we can get the output of the AES-CBC uh, uh, for, for that block. And in that case, it means that the, the efficiency of this AES-CBC on, for example, Haswell, which has a latency of seven, would be 4.37 uh, cycle per byte. Now, if we move to the uh, more parallelizable uh, counter mode used in, uh, for, for using AES, which has a throughput of one, it means that after the first message block, uh, the first run function has been called, we can directly call after just one cycle the next instruction, and we can parallelize as much as possible. So in that case, we can process seven blocks in parallel in, parallel in just uh, 70 cycles. So we gain a factor of seven in comparison to CBC, and it can reach 0.6 uh, cycle per byte. So that's something that we also want to achieve. And because of this, actually, we get a small limitation. 
because we want the, basically the calls to the AES run function to be uh, as, in, as independent as possible, because we don't want to wait for an output to, to be processed to, to be able to call the next instruction. So the consequence is we have to use, if we want to use n call to the AES run function, the internal state must have at least n words uh, in, the, in the internal state. And there is also a, a slight uh, thing that I want to note. For example, if we take a RAID4 design, so four calls to the AES run function in this design, and we take uh, an example for as well. And you see here that actually when we are done calling the four first one, we have to wait for three cycles before we can actually call the next one. So on this platform as well, because it has a ratio, uh, latency to throughput ratio of seven, we have to wait three empty cycles doing nothing before we can call at, at cycle seven the next one. So here the effective speed would be six, seven over 16. Why if we look at the same design, exactly the same one on Skylake, it has a ratio of four to one, latency is four. There is no empty cycle, so the optimal speed is the effective speed that we observe, which is four over 16 cycle per byte. So this is something that we also want to consider to get optimal uh, uh, constructions. So this summarizes a bit the uh, design choices, choices that we have to make. So we want a low rate to achieve high performances. We have to have at least the number of state wars uh, as the number of uh, AES uh, calls that we make in the, in the design. And of course, we want the design to the calls to the AES function to be independent because if two are uh, just uh, sequential, we have to wait for the first one. So the calls have to be independent. So just a few, uh, a few notes about the security. So we are only providing building blocks for, uh, for constructions. It's not fully defined instantiation, so we cannot uh, target every class of attacks uh, that are available in the literature. So basically what we do is that we reduce the security claims of our constructions to the resistance to internal collisions. And actually this makes sense because there are many uh, possible applications, for example, if you look at Mac, hashing, or AE, which, are, which can be reduced in most cases to internal collision uh, for forgeries or collision in, uh, in hash function. So in our case, to evaluate the, the security, we are looking at uh, differential characteristic, which starts with a zero difference and ends in the zero difference. And the, the differences, the non-zero differences in the middle are actually introduced, injected by the uh, message blocks that the adversary can uh, control. So we want to maximize, to, as an adversary, we want to maximize this probability, but as a designer, we want to ensure that this probability is low enough so that there is no uh, p possible ways to get internal collisions. So actually, it's easier in the case of AES-based designs because we can reduce that even further to counting the number of activist boxes in the characteristic. And for example, if we can prove that the number of active S boxes in the smallest characteristic is bounded, lower bounded by 22, we can say that the probability of this characteristic is lower than uh, the block size of AES to the minus uh, 28. So the classical example is obviously for one of AES in the second key model. For any characteristic, we know that the minimum number of active S boxes is 25 which prove that the characteristic corresponding to this one is uh, probability below to the minus 128. So in our case, we are targeting a uh, number of activist boxes, which is at least 22. So uh, here I'm, I'm describing two classes, one simple case and the more general one that we are looking for. And we are using only two operations, the AES uh, run function is denoted by A and XOR of 128-bit uh, words. So the simple case is uh, aimed at using the white trait strategy of the AES, which provides uh, proof by hand that there is that number of uh, activist boxes in the R round of AES. So we want to rely on R cascaded iteration of the AES run function. For example, in this design, which by the way is not secure, uh, this word goes through one round of AES and directly after it goes to the, to the next uh, AES and you cannot do anything in between. So we can use the fact that there is some bounds for two rounds of AES in that case. 
However, we will see that it's not sufficient to achieve uh, very high performances, so this is why we go to the more general uh, class, where we allow um, uh, non-iterative uh, iterated, uh, AES run function calls, and we can actually XOR uh, values in, in the middle. So the two classes can be compared to the single key model, where there is no difference in, in the key in between, or the related key model, which is more complex to analyze, and this is why we need to rely on something else to prove the bounds, and in, in our case, we relied on uh, MILP uh, modeling and MILP solvers. So for the first class, uh, we prove a theorem which says basically that the rates of uh, secure design in the, this uh, class we are reusing R iterated uh, AES run calls cannot be less than uh, R. So this gives a lower bound that we can achieve. Uh, we cannot go beyond some uh, threshold for that uh, design in that class. And the intuition is that for, 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 for this design, the adversary has enough freedom to just construct uh, an internal collision with just no activist boxes. So this is why we get this bound. And so the corollary, as I said, is that we cannot go below some uh, bounds for the efficiency. For example, if we are using four rounds of AS, which has been used a lot in the, in the previous schemes, we cannot go below 0.25 cycle per byte, which is already good, but we want something more. So in that class, we still did something. We performed a complete search where we're using uh, three rounds, iterated round of AS, and we limit ourselves to 12 steps words in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the construction. And actually, we can see that there is no uh, uh, schemes that are secure in this class. And then we move on to this case where we're using two uh, iterated ARIS uh, run function calls. In that case, the space is too large, so we cannot compute exhaustively all the possible construction, but the most efficient one that we found as rate 2 to 2. 0.66, which is depicted here. So it's using uh, eight calls to the AES run function, and it injects one, two, and three message blocks, which provides this rate. And we can prove by, uh, by analyzing this that it has at least 25 activist boxes. So to achieve more, uh, to, to be more efficient, we move to the more general class, and uh, so the search space has several dimensions, so the rates that I mentioned before, the number of calls to the run function, the AES run function that uh, we have in the, in the scheme, the state size, which can be possibly large, and the number of blocks that we inject into the state. So we su successively look at uh, rate 3, rate be between 2 and 3, and rate 2. And in each case, is we're trying to minimize the state size of this construction to get uh, as small as possible. So for uh, rate 3, the minimal size is uh, S equals 3. We have to have at least 3. And we can actually show that there is no secure design in that. So then we move on to 4 and 5 words, and we show that there are two designs which are actually secure, which are here and there. However, for current platforms where the, uh, the minimal latency that we can achieve is 4, these designs are not optimal because we are wasting some clock cycles inside. If we can uh, build a platform with uh, latency 3, then this would be very good. But we don't have that for now. So we are to move on to a, a larger state size, for example, 6 in this case. So we get this secure design. And so I'm not going to describe everything, but in that case, for example, we get uh, 6 calls to the AES front function, 2 blocks which are injected here, M1 and M2 here. X is a number of additional XOR because uh, in this AES uh, hardware instruction, we can inject some subkeys, so we can get this XOR for free, for instance, considering M1 as a subkey. And the security margin is pretty low because we get exactly 22 activist boxes, the bounds that we wanted at the beginning. And on these three platforms, it's a, it performs really good. Uh, for example, on Skylake, 1.188 cycle per byte uh, to, to, to evaluate this design. So after we have this uh, construction, we achieve different security margins with seven uh, in, uh, internal state words, this one with eight, and this one with nine, which uh, inject in turn three uh, message blocks, one, two, three. So this is why we get nine calls, three uh, message words, and this achieves rate three as well. 
So now we move on to rate uh, below three, so in that case 2.5. So we found two designs which are uh, secure uh, in that, for that rate, seven state words here. Uh, so the figures are here, five, uh, five calls, two message blocks in introduced, and it can achieve a, a security uh, level of 22 active boxes. That one achieved 23. And then we go down to rate two, and I believe this one is the mo most interesting one. So despite the state is quite large with 12 active, uh, 12 uh, uh, message words, we can actually achieve very low speed on Skylake on, uh, with this performance of 0.125 by using only RAID 2. And this seems surprising to me to be able to use only RAID 2. So we use only six AES run function calls to process three message blocks. On. And uh, yeah, okay, before the open problem, to summarize uh, what we've done, we have proposed new building blocks to uh, construct uh, uh, design based on the AES front function and taking profit on the AES NI uh, hardware instruction. And the fastest, the smallest design uses six internal state words and can reach uh, that performances on Skylake. And the fastest one, we're using much larger state uh, of 12 words words and reach that speed. And the main open problem would be, okay, of course, can you improve with rates uh, greater than two? But the most promising one, I, I would say, and I'm not sure if it's even possible, to go beyond, uh, below rate two, and for example, use only rate 1.5, for example, three AES calls to inject two message blocks. Uh, that would be extremely efficient on, uh, on many, many platforms. So this is a good uh, challenge, I believe. And that's it, thank you.